Welcome to my lecture online. Now here's a really good example of how to implement different rules and different things we've learned so far to solve something that looks pretty simple. We have to find the integral and evaluate it uh, from 0 to 1. The integral is the natural log of x dx. Seems simple enough, but don't be fooled. First of all, we don't have the natural log of x defined when x is equal to 0. So at the lower limit, the function is not defined. The natural log of 0 is simply not defined. So therefore, we need to be careful what we do here. We need to rewrite it like this. The limit as t approaches 0 from above of the integral evaluated from t to 1 of the natural log of x dx. Then on top of that, we have to use the integration by parts technique to integrate something like the natural log of x. For example, we can say that the integral of u dv is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du. So here what we're going to do is we're going to let, let's see here, hmm, how about let dv is equal to the natural log of, oh, no, we can't do that because that's the one we can't integrate. That would not help us. Let's try it like this instead. Let um, let u equals the natural log of x. Then we can say that du is equal to 1 over x dx. That's better. And we can say that dv is equal to dx, so that v is equal to x. And now when we implement that in here, we can say this is equal to the limit as t goes to 0 from above of the following thing. So we have u times v, u times v. I like to write the v first. So we have x times the natural log of x as the limits go from t to 1 minus the integral. And so we have the integral of v du. Now v is x. du is 1 over x dx. And we integrate from t to 1. All right, the x's cancel out. That means we're simply integrating dx, so this can be written as the limit as t goes to 0 from above of x times the natural log of x evaluated from t to 1 minus, here we get the integral of dx, which is x, evaluated from t to 1. Okay, now let's go ahead and plug in those limits. We're still going to leave this part right here, so this is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 from above of the following. So we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 times the natural log of 1. So we have 1 times the natural log of 1, minus, we plug in the lower limit, minus t times the natural log of t. And then we have minus, here we plug in the upper limit, we get, put parentheses down, we have 1 minus, we plug in the lower limit, we get t. Okay, for some of these it's fairly straightforward. First of all, the natural log of 1 is 0, so this term goes to 0. And here, when we plug in 0 for t, then we get 1 minus 0, so we simply have minus 1 here. So simplifying this, we can say the following. This is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 from above of the following. So here we have a 0 minus t times the natural log of t. And here we have a minus 1. Minus 1, like that. There we go. Now we have a problem, because if we now let t go to 0, notice this middle term here becomes 0 times the natural log of 0, which is basically converges to infinity. So 0 times infinity is definitely undefined. So now we need to use another technique to take care of this middle term right here, which means we have to use L'Hopital's rule. So let's try that. So that means that this is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 from above of, well, the 0 can go away. We have a minus 1. Let's put that in front. So minus 1 times, or not times, we're going to subtract from that. Hmm, let's rewrite that. So we have minus the natural log of t divided by 
1 over t. So instead of writing the t in the numerator, I'm going to write it as 1 over t in the denominator. You'll see in just a moment why I did that, because now I can go ahead and take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator using L'Hopital's rule, and we get the following. This is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 from above of minus 1, and here when we take the derivative of the numerator, we get the natural log of t derivative, that would be 1 over t, divided by, and here when we take the derivative of 1 over t in the denominator becomes minus 1 over t squared. And of course, and this negative cancels out that negative, so this would be equal to the natural, or the limit, as t goes to 0 from above of negative 1, this negative times this negative becomes positive, and as the t squared here in the denominator goes to the numerator, I get t squared over t, or simply plus t. Now I can allow t to go to 0, because when it does, this becomes 0, so this becomes minus 1 plus 0, or minus 1. So you can see that this integral, the integral for the natural log of x dx from 0 to 1, is equal to negative 1. And that's how it's done.